Lecture 14, Politicians and Sanctity. How can Catholics better the world politically? The principal way that Catholics are called to do this is by growing in sanctity and wisdom. As we participate ever more deeply in divine life, we will grow in a wisdom that is not only realistically aware of the sinful state of this world and the possibility that in this fallen state we can freely choose to cause greater disorder, but also is open to the promising possibilities for a better world. Saints are people who embody this wisdom that is both realistic, with respect to man's tendency to sin, and is optimistic with respect to our God-given capacity to cooperate with His grace as His images to foster political environments that may offer foretastes of heavenly realities. In this concluding chapter, we will focus our attention on a few notable Catholic saints who serve as models for those who desire to better the world by engaging in political activity. These saints include the following people. St. Thomas More, St. Henry II, St. Cunegund, St. Louis IX, and Blessed Charles of Austria. We will also reflect briefly on the inspiring life of Otto von Habsburg and the servant of God, Father Jose Maria Arismendi Arrieta. St. Thomas More. In an earlier chapter, from the perspective of civil disobedience, you were introduced to the English St. Thomas More. In the 1500s, St. Thomas More, in his high political office of Lord Chancellor, heroically obeyed God rather than King Henry VIII. For this reason, he was executed, but not before allegedly saying, I am the king's good servant, but God's first. Due to St. Thomas More's exemplary ordering of his political allegiance to his love of and obedience of God and the Catholic Church, in 2000, St. John Paul II proclaimed him the patron saint of statesmen and politicians. According to St. John Paul II, the life of St. Thomas More is not only a source of inspiration for Catholic politicians and statesmen, but also for, and I quote, a political system which has its supreme goal, the service of the human person. For John Paul II, St. Thomas More is the patron saint of politicians because he heroically followed his well-formed conscience instead of obeying unjust laws set forth by the King of England. St. Louis IX. The French king, St. Louis IX, lived in the 1200s, is recognized in France as a patron saint of monarchs. As king, he helped the church to build magnificent Gothic cathedrals and developed its universities. The great saint and doctor of the church, St. Thomas Aquinas, who both attended the University of Paris as a student and taught there, was even invited by Louis IX to dine with him. According to Thomas Aquinas, possibly influenced by the example of St. Louis IX's virtuous life, an ideal king is one, and I quote, who makes a whole province rejoice in peace, who restrains violence, preserves justice, and arranges by his laws and precepts what is to be done by men. St. Louis exemplified these traits by seeking to end private wars between French nobles and by forbidding excessively violent punishment. The canonization proceedings of 1297 contain a notable example of St. Louis's virtuous manner of balancing justice with mercy. According to the proceedings, a count had ordered the execution of three minor nobles. Judging this sentence to be overly harsh, St. Louis ordered the count to be imprisoned. Throughout his life, St. Louis demonstrated that not only was he a friend of France's prominent Catholic bishops and teachers, but he also was a friend of those who lacked significant authority, especially the poor. He took great efforts in meeting their needs. Out of love for those in need, he founded a hospital called Quince Vents, dedicated to serving the blind and poor. St. Henry II and St. Cunegonde. They lived in the 900s and 1000s. St. Henry II was also a saintly monarch. From, 10 th from 1014 until he died in 1040, he ruled as the Holy Roman Emperor over a vast territory with its focal point in Central Europe. In 1152, about a hundred years after St. Henry's death, Pope Eugene III canonized St. Henry II 
evidence of St. Henry II's sanctity include being a generous benefactor of the Church and helping to build, repair, and endow Episcopal sees, monasteries, and churches. He is also known for avidly seeking peace and unity throughout his empire. According to legend, he and his wife, St. Cunegund, also a saint, live celibately. Blessed Charles of Austria A more recent Catholic saint and political leader is Blessed Charles of Austria. He died in 1922. He was beatified in 2004 by John Paul II. In his beatification homily, St. John Paul II praised Blessed Charles by saying, and I quote, The decisive task of Christians consists in seeking and recognizing and following God's will in all things. The Christian statesman Charles of Austria confronted this challenge every day. To his eyes, war appeared as something appalling. Amid the tumult of the First World War, he strove to promote the peace initiative of my predecessor, Benedict XV. From the beginning, Emperor Charles conceived of his office as a holy service to his people. His chief concern was to follow the Christian vocation to holiness also in his political actions. For this reason, his thoughts turned to social assistance. May he be an example for all of us, especially for those who have political responsibilities in Europe today. End of quote. Blessed Charles was born into the royal Austrian Habsburg family. His father was Archduke Otto and his mother was Princess Maria Josepha of Saxony. As influenced by his loving parents, Blessed Charles early in life developed devotion to the Eucharist and to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In 1911, he happily married Princess Zita of Bourbon and Parma. They were blessed with eight children. Then, in 1914, only a few years after marrying his beloved wife, Archduke Francis Ferdinand was assassinated. This Archduke was at the time in line to inherit the throne of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire from the reigning 83-year-old Emperor Franz Joseph I. The murder of the Archduke meant that Blessed Charles, who is next in line, would inherit the throne of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. When em Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria died of old age two years later in 1916, Blessed Charles was crowned Emperor of, Emperor of the Empire of Austria and King of Hungary. As Emperor, he continued to pray and to carefully discern God's will. His prayerful discernment of life was particularly evident in that he was the only prominent political leader of his time who supported Pope Benedict XV's promotion of peace before and during World War I. After World War I ended, Blessed Charles prudently supported the right of the Austrian people to determine their own form of government, even if this meant rejecting the monarchy, his monarchy. His November 11, 1918 proclamation reads the following, and I quote, Since my accession, I have incessantly tried to rescue my peoples from this tremendous war. I have not delayed the reestablishment of constitutional rights or the opening of a way for the people to substantial national development. Filled with an unalterable love for my peoples, I will not with my person be a hindrance to their free development. I acknowledge the decision taken by German Austria to form a separate state. The people has, by its deputies, taken charge of the government. I relinquish every participation in the administration of the state. Likewise, I have released the members of the Austrian government from their offices. May the German-Austrian people realize harmony from the new adjustment. The happiness of my peoples was my aim from the beginning. My warmest wishes are that an internal peace will be able to heal the wounds of this war. End of quote. Notice that in, the, in this proclamation, never once did Blessed Charles use the word abdication. He deliberately omitted this word in order to leave open the possibility of regaining his authority if there were sufficient reasons to do so. Shortly after Blessed Charles relinquished his power, Pope Benedict XV, who feared that communists would overtake Europe, requested Blessed Charles to re-engage in politics. In 1921, Blessed Charles, in response to the Pope, attempted to regain his political authority in Hungary, but unfortunately failed. As a result, he was exiled to the island of Madeira, where he lived in poverty with his family. On April 1, 1922, 
He died in exile, but not before saying on his deathbed, and I quote, I strive always in all things to understand as clearly as possible and follow the will of God, and this in the most perfect way. Otto von Habsburg Otto von Habsburg died in 2011, was Blessed Charles' son. Imagine having not only a king as a father, but also a saint as a father. Although Otto has not been beatified as his father has been, he was also, like his father, known for his holiness. In 1938, after Otto voiced his opposition to the Nazi takeover of Austria, the Nazi sentenced him to death. Fearing his life, Otto fled Austria and eventually took refuge in the U.S. After World War II ended, Otto returned to Europe. In Europe, he spent several years in various European countries until finally settling in Germany. In Germany, he once again became politically active. There he joined the Christian Social Union Party. Through this party, he was elected to the European Parliament. Otto served as a member of the European Parliament for around 20 years. He also served as president of an international organization called the Pan-Europa Union. As president, he encouraged countries to unite politically, oppose nationalism, oppose communism, paved the way for the current relatively peaceful integration of Europe into the European Union, and helped bring about the collapse of the Soviet Union. On July 4, 2011, this great statesman and promoter of Christian peace and unity died. Upon hearing Otto's birth into eternal life, Pope Benedict XVI sent words of condolence to Otto's son Karl, the Archduke of Austria. The Holy Father wrote the following, and I quote, with deepest sympathy have I learned about the passing of your father, His Royal Highness, Archduke Otto of Austria. In this hour of sadness at your painful loss, I am united with you and all the royal family in pray, prayer for the dead. During his long and full life, Archduke Otto has been a witness to the changing face of Europe. Trusting in God and aware of a significant heritage, he has been a committed European, tirelessly working for freedom, for the unity of peoples, and for a just order in this continent. May the Lord reward him for his diverse acts for the good of mankind and give him the fullness of life in his heavenly kingdom. Through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, I offer an apostolic blessing to all family members and to all who mourn Archduke Otto and who pray for his eternal salvation. Father Jose Maria Arasmandiarreta and the Mondragon Corporation. In 1999, the diocesan phase of the canonization process of Father Jose Maria Arismendirieta to be recognized as Servant of God began. It concluded on May 6, 2009. Father Jose is now officially recognized by the Catholic Church as a Servant of God with the possibility of eventually being beatified and then canonized as a saint. His path towards being recognized as a saint advanced once again when in 2015, on December 14th, Pope Francis affirmed that Father Jose lived a life of heroic virtue and may be honored as venerable. Father Jose was born in the Basque region of northern Spain. At an early age, he felt called to the priesthood, entered a seminary, and was ordained in 1936. In 1941, he was assigned to the town of Mondragon, and there became Mondragon's Catholic Action Chaplain. In 1942, he, established, he helped to establish a professional school. Then, in 1947, he assisted 11 young people to study industrial engineering in the city of Zaragoza. The school and the students who went to Zaragoza eventually came together to form what is now known as the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation, founded in 1956 by Father Jose. Pope Pius XI, 1931, Social Encyclical, Quadragesimo Anno, inspired Father Jose to begin this industry. According to Father Jose, he founded it with, and I quote, a group of young people who are very good Christians, and I would even go so far as to say they're good apostles. As of October 2014, this multi-billion dollar industry employs over 74,000 employees, runs 257 businesses cooperatives worldwide, including a few in the U.S., and directs 15 technology research centers. What sets Mondragon apart from almost all other large businesses? Primarily, Mondragon distinguishes itself by following the distributionist philosophy 
of Hilaire Belloc and G.K. Chesterton. Consequently, following the principle of a just distribution of property and resources, it is worker-owned and worker-governed. The just distribution of property and resources is also reflected in how decisions are reached in the company. At Mondragon, each employee, no matter how important he is, has only one vote. Another notable feature of this Catholic vision-inspired company is its salary cap for the highest paid employee. The highest paid employee may be paid no more than six times what the lowest paid employee receives. The company is also mandated to tie 10% of their surplus profit to community development projects. These Catholic-inspired arrangements have created a highly positive work environment at Mondragon that also influences life outside the company. Workers at Mondragon consistently report a high satisfaction rate, and the town of Mondragon has, I quote, lower crime rates, lower rates of domestic violence, higher rates of education, and better physical and emotional health than neighboring communities. Conclusion We have now concluded this introductory course on politics. You have learned the basics of this discipline as a social science while being introduced at the same time to key philosophical political principles that are in accordance with the Catholic faith. If you are inspired to actively engage in politics, I encourage you to do so. Following the example of the saints mentioned, you can also bring to life the promising political possibilities for a better world. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his love. May you bring Christ to the world. God bless.